ran a well orchestrated campaign, well mapped out, and he deserves to win based on his organization up here in New Hampshire. But has he captured the soul of the Republican Party? Has he captured the soul of the American people? And that's kind of the $64,000 question that we'll be talking about, of course, as everyone analyzes Mitt Romney's uh, projected win tonight. Bill, I thank you for that uh, you. very much, and we'll send it right back to you, Wolf. All right, they're counting the votes in Nashville. We'll stay in close touch with you, Soledad. Thanks very much. Let's go over to John King, who's looking at uh, the, the, uh, the vote coming in. 13% of the official vote is, is in. Now, once again, we've uh, projected Mitt Romney the winner in New Hampshire. What are you seeing over there? A couple things to look for. Number one, we're going to see who comes in second place with 13% of the vote, and Ron Paul at the moment winning there. We'll see if that holds up. It gets increasingly hard, Wolf, for Newt Gingrich, Rick Santorum, to argue they're stronger candidates than Mitt Romney if they keep coming in not only behind Governor Romney, but behind Ron Paul as well. You've seen the dark red fill in in the map. A couple things are significant. Right here in the capital conquered. Mitt Romney now with 100% of the vote, and he wins. This is one of the major population center. He wins with 32% of the vote. Gets harder for any other candidates. One of the reasons we project him the winner of the state is now with Manchester in, Mitt Romney winning. We can project him the winner because in the places with the most votes, uh, Governor Romney is winning. Romney people know they have something to prove here. This is his home turf. He was stunned here four years ago. So will they make their mark in proving it? Here's one thing to look at. You see Governor Romney winning up here in the central part of the state. Let's go back in time four years ago. The lighter red, that's John McCain. So some of these smaller counties that were McCain country four years ago turning into Romney country this year. One other point I want to make as we come back to this year's map. Look down here. This is four years ago. Look down here. It's along the Massachusetts border. Nashua, some of these border towns. Salem, Wyndham, some of the places down there. If you take this off now, come back. We haven't received any of the vote down here. This is the part of the state where Romney did perform very, very well last last time around four years ago. I was just in touch with his campaign. Maybe they shouldn't be talking like this, but they say when the votes come in here, when the votes come in in Bedford, which is just to the west of Manchester, they believe their margin will actually go higher. And that will become, Wolf, the big debate. Governor Romney is projected as the winner. Now it will be a question of is he a strong nominee? Was he weakened on his home turf? He won Iowa ugly by eight votes. The margin of his victory, the size of that victory, will factor huge in the debate today about how strong he is going into South Carolina. And the other big, the other big debating point will be who gets this spot right here? Does Governor Huntsman get his turn as the conservative alternative to Romney? Hard to say that when you ran essentially as a moderate in a state like this. Does Ron Paul prove yet again, maybe he can't have the strength to be the ultimate nominee, but with the new proportional delegate rules, Ron Paul is making another statement tonight that he is a force in this race to stay, not to be the ultimate nominee, but to have an impact on the debate, perhaps to block others from getting to Governor Romney and Wolf ultimately, if he can keep raising money and he has a great organization, to have enough delegates to be an impact player at the Tampa Convention. You know, uh, it's going to be critical, this number two, number three. If, right. if John Huntsman comes in number two, that presumably will propel him, encourage him to continue. Uh, uh, if he comes in number three, and it's a distant number three, maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. By the way, we're getting ready to hear from uh, Mitt Romney. He's not wasting any time. He's going to be speaking, speaking to his supporters in Manchester. Uh, but before we go to him, I want to go to Tom Foreman, uh, who's joining us from the next location in this uh, electoral uh, uh, map that's going on. He's in Charleston, South Carolina. He's got a group of voters there that he's going to be talking to. All right, uh, Tom Foreman, uh, there you are right there. you got some voters behind you. Tell us what you're going to be doing because we're going to be coming back to you throughout the night for important information looking ahead to South Carolina. Well, Wolf, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. This is the next battleground. This is where it all goes right now to South Carolina. This is where those who are in trouble are going to try to reassert that they're not in trouble, get back in the race. This is where Mitt Romney, if he's one up here, as it looks like, he will try to pull further away if he can. So we want to see what these voters do tonight as they watch the speeches of the candidates. I'm going to step over here. and This gentleman will hold up what he has in his hand here. This box is the same sort of thing that every person here has. By turning this dial back and forth, they can indicate whether they like or dislike what is happening in that speech. So as Mr. Romney speaks tonight and the other candidates come out and have something to say, that information will come in. It'll be processed by computers. You'll see it on your screen. They react. Blue line for the men, pink for the women, showing whether they like or dislike what they're seeing. And that's really going to matter here, Wolf. It's a perception analyzer, that little box uh, I see over there. So we're going to get a sense of what they like. Uh, Mitt Romney is getting ready to speak first. He's the winner, we've projected, uh, in New Hampshire. So just to recap, Tom, uh, the folks there, they're going to be hearing what Mitt Romney says, and, and they're going to be able to turn that dial. When they like something, he says it goes up. When they don't like it, it goes down. And we're going to do this for all the speeches we hear tonight. Is that right? 
Exactly, and it's going to be in real time, Wolf. Exactly as they're speaking, you will see how those words are landing with this group of voters here. And importantly, I want you to bear in mind, everybody here will vote Republican, but they all said beforehand they are undecided. These are the voters that every candidate wants to win. Tonight we'll see if they can. Wolf? Well, well, they'll have their chance on January 21st. What, in about 10 or 11 days from now, they'll actually have a, a chance to vote. Uh, Tom Foreman uh, over there. Uh, let, let's go back to Soledad right now. She's in Nashville at that polling station. I take it the results are now in, Soledad? The results, not only the results, uh, are the results in Wolf, they have it now officially posted. This is literally where they put them, so anybody who wants to come by to see how the results uh, read, you can see there were 30 people who were running for president here on the Republican side, and we have Mitt Romney. If you go down, Mitt Romney is our winner at the top with 585 votes. Then after that is Ron Paul with 321. After that, we have uh, John Huntsman at 221 votes. Newt Gingrich got 100 votes. He is right over here. And then we have after that um, a Santorum coming in with 118 votes. A total at 1,788 votes that they have now counted and posted officially. This is the, the tape that comes out of the tabulator machine that we showed you a little bit earlier. Now for the next couple of right, hours, we're going to start uh, wrapping Hold on up. for a moment, Soledad. So, hold on for a Jim Acosta's got John Huntsman with him right now. Uh, I want to go to Jim. Uh, That's right. Go ahead, Jim. Wolf, we are showing you exclusively behind the scenes what is going on inside the Huntsman War Room. As you can see, the governor is right behind me at this very moment. It looks like he may be preparing some remarks for later tonight. He's watching the returns come in, but uh, keep in mind, I talked to a Huntsman source just a, a little while ago who said that uh, they're, they're waiting for some returns to come in from some other parts of the state, from the north and the west. They feel like that's where their, their strongholds are located, and when those returns come in, that could be... Uh, the difference that puts them over the top, puts them into second place because a strong second place or even a strong third place uh, showing, according to this campaign, they believe will give them sort of a slingshot into South Carolina. Earlier this evening on a local radio show, uh, John Huntsman was talking to a, an interview and was basically saying that, look, you have to look, watch the markets move. Uh, look what happened at Rick Santorum and what he did in Iowa. When Rick Santorum did well in Iowa, that moved the markets in, in New Hampshire. It moved the markets in South Carolina. John Huntsman wants those markets to move here in New Hampshire. He wants those markets to move down in South Carolina, depending on what he does here in New Hampshire. But, of course, he has to sell here in New Hampshire tonight, Wolf. And that means, of course, a strong second place or a strong third place showing, according to the Huntsman campaign. Wolf. Yeah, it looks like he's watching CNN uh, as well. We hope he is watching CNN. I know at some point he he's going to be watching speaking. watching it right now. And we'll That's hear correct. what he has to say. He's got... I saw his daughter standing behind him, some of his staff. I'm sure his family is there as well. I'm glad we got that kind of access, uh, Jim. Uh, do we That's have right. any idea at what point you think he's going to wait for a lot more results before he actually goes out and speaks to his supporters? I, I think he's going to wait for some more results to come in, Wolf. Uh, they feel very confident that they can catch Ron Paul in this state. It's not over yet in the minds of the Huntsman campaign. They've been watching these returns come in. They feel like the returns that have come in so far this evening have been very heavily favored towards Mitt Romney. They say that the, the results that will come in later on tonight uh, better favor his campaign, and so that's why uh, they're in sort of a wait-and-see mode right now. Obviously, a second-place showing would do a lot for this campaign, and they're also saying a strong third-place showing. They go, I just talked to John Weaver, the campaign manager for this campaign. He said, look, any talk of him jump, jumping out of this race after tonight, if he's in third place, is just, and I can't use the word, it rhymes, it rhymes with bull spit, uh, Wolf. But uh, he said, look, they're, they're moving on to South Carolina. They feel like they have strong resources down there. And keep in mind, Florida comes after South Carolina, and that's where Mrs. Huntsman, Mary Kay Huntsman, is from. She is from Florida. So they feel like they might even have a slight home field advantage down there. Uh, but obviously this is a pretty exciting night for Governor Huntsman. He's bet it all on this state. He, this is New Hampshire or bust, and, and that moment has come for him tonight, Wolf. That's his wife, Mary Kay, right behind him, and his daughter, Lydia, over there is uh, behind him as well. All right, uh, Jim Acosta, stand by. We're going to uh, await Mitt Romney. He's about to speak to his supporters, we're told. Uh, we'll, of course, want to uh, take that speech live. You'll hear it. You'll see it live here from Mitt Romney headquarters. Uh, let, me, let me check in uh, with Candy Crowley. She's over at Romney headquarters. Uh, Candy, uh, you have a special guest there with you. A familiar face, former New Hampshire Governor John Sununu. So when you looked at the numbers and uh, you've seen kind of the internals, what encourages you most? Well, first of all, it's a good win for the governor. Second How much, what's the a, what's a percentage going to be? I, I don't know. The numbers that we've seen are 36, 37, but, but we got to see what they are. Uh, you can't change them at this stage. Even I can't change them, Crowley. 
uh, Candy Crowley. But the fact is that it's a good win, uh, a large turnout amongst independents. A lot of them voted for Mitt Romney. I think Governor, uh, Governor Romney is going into uh, South Carolina strong from here. And the message from the independents means he'd go into the general election quite strong against Obama. Look, the rap here is, and when, when you talk to people about Romney, is he doesn't sort of engender that kind of passion that others have in this race. What does he need to do? Well, I, I actually don't think he needs to do anything. I don't think excite is the right word. I think unite is the right word. And this is a man who will unite the party after he wins the nomination. And your predictions here for number two, and, and who would the, who would the on, Romney uh, campaign most like to go in with, num with number two I here? I don't think it makes much difference. I, I, I want Candy to hold on for a second, because we got Jim Acosta with uh, Governor Huntsman uh, joining us live. Uh, Jim. Uh, that's right, Wolf. I'm joined now by Governor John Huntsman, and I wanted to ask you about expectations tonight. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about expectations. What happens next? To, to, you know, a after what happens here tonight, let me ask you: Is second place basically your threshold tonight? Well, I think is you've got to conclude that there are a few tickets out of New Hampshire, and we're now in a solid third. Who knows beyond that? But I'd have to tell you, I think there are at least three tickets out of uh, out of New Hampshire. So as we look at the numbers now, uh, we're in a strong, confident position, and all eyes are going to be south on South Carolina from here. And I know you feel in the last 24 hours that uh, Governor Romney, there were some weaknesses that emerged in his campaign uh, with some of the comments that he made, and you, and you seized on some of those comments and, and basically uh, described him as unelectable because of, of some of those comments. Do you hope that perhaps you can make the case out in South Carolina, the same case that you made up here, that hold on, folks, this thing's not over yet? Well, the people of South Carolina will be looking uh, for exactly what the people of New Hampshire have been looking for, and that's electability. That's somebody who's going to be able to stand for the issues uh, that are going to carry us to victory ultimately, be able to address the trust deficit and the economic deficit, not talk about uh, in the enjoyment of firing people or about pink slips uh, in a way that uh, they'll get tripped up by the DNC and by the Chicago machine that has a billion dollars behind it. And if he says, I was taken out of context, I didn't mean to talk about firing all kinds of people, he was just talking about insurance companies? Well, we understand. I think his campaign also took something out of context recently. That happens in politics. The fact of the matter You're is... You're talking about the Obama, the very right. first Romney campaign right. ad that took President Obama out of con uh, context, right. that's what you're right. talking about. You, you've got a billion dollars uh, with the Chicago political machine that's uh, is going to focus laser-like on the nominee. And we need to make sure that we've got uh, a messenger, uh, whoever that happens to be, who can take it all the way to the end uh, in ways that really does build trust among the American people. So you said three tickets out of New Hampshire. That means tonight, if you're in third place, we wake up tomorrow morning, we don't get an email in our inbox that says John Huntsman <laughs> is out of this race. You're in this race. No, Liz, where we stand right now is a solid, comfortable, confident position, and uh, we go south from here. All right, Governor John Huntsman, thanks very much. Wolf, Great I'll send it back to you. Good to see you too, sir, and good luck tonight. And thanks to Wolf. And, and, he, and Governor Huntsman just said thanks to Wolf as well, so we'll send it back to you, Wolf. Thanks very much, and uh, thank the governor. He made news uh, just now. He confirmed that even if he comes in third, if it's a solid third, it looks like it'll at least be a solid third. He is going to South Carolina. He will not be dropping out of the race. So we got some news here. Jim Acosta reporting for us uh, from Governor Huntsman's headquarters over there. Uh, Candy Crowley is over at Mitt Romney's headquarters. And Candy, I interrupted you when you were speaking to John Sununu. I don't know if he's still with you, the former New, New Hampshire governor, the former White House chief of staff, the former CNN Crossfire co-host. I could go on and on and on. But uh, we're waiting to hear from Mitt Romney. He's uh, getting ready to speak. But go ahead and uh, tell John Sununu, if he didn't hear, that John Huntsman has just told CNN he is in this race, he's going to South Carolina, even if he comes in third. Well, he did, in fact, hear, Wolf, uh, that John Huntsman is going to go to South Carolina. Uh, that's his intention tonight. It seems to me that that is a different kind of a threat to Mitt Romney because he does kind of fish in the same pond of voters that Romney does. How big of a threat is John Huntsman? John Huntsman spent six months in New Hampshire. If you put a campaign strategy based on that, it'll take him 25 years to do all 50 states. I don't think John Huntsman is any kind of a threat to Mitt Romney. None at all. Who, who, who do you most worry about then? Anybody? I mean, are you just on the... All collectively. And the fact is, is that, that the governor has to start uh, his next campaign in South Carolina as soon as he's ready, which I think will be tomorrow, and he has to be prepared to do it one step at a time the way he did it here.